Hi, I'm Gudma Peterson. Welcome to my YouTube channel. In the first part, I did explain how I like to talk about my training in three steps, or look at my training in three steps. The steps were shuffle and relaxed, gaining control, and then connected and collected. In the part two, I talked a little bit about the um, first part, the shuffle and relaxed. Now I want to start to talk about the second part, the gaining control part. Um, I'm going to kind of give you an overview of it first, kind of a little bit explain to you how I like the horse to respond to it and what kind of control I like to have. And then later on, my plan is to kind of break it down into smaller, uh, smaller steps so I can help you more like step by step to go through it. And uh, so what I'm going to be talking about here is the connection between the lag and the rain cue. So the connection between the lag and the rain cue basically means that I'm using my lags together with my seed and my reins to create some moves to, to, to control the horse's feet. It's very important that before you can start to help the horse or improve the horse, or affect the way the horse goes. Control is top line, or control that he's one-sided and stiff on one side or the other, which most horses will be, is to have control over his feet. You gotta be able to control where the front feet are, where the hind feet are, even where his neck position is. So you can get control over the horse's feet and body, and then you can affect the way he goes and, and, and help him to, to um, go better or, or go in a way that you want him to go. One thing first though, before we start to work with the connected cues, we have to be very sure that the horse is good at the separated cues. And that means that he is, has, is, is responds well to the lag, for example. He responds well to the rain, one at a time, like I was explaining in the first part with the shuffle and relaxed. <clears throat> and he respects, understands, and listens to your aids separate from each other. If your horse doesn't know that the lag means forward, if the horse doesn't know that the reins mean stop or turn, I do not recommend teaching him any kind of connected cues because it's never going to work, right? So just make sure that the basic cues, the separated cues, are understood and they work well. All right. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to Show this horse all of a sudden that we can use our hands and our legs, as a simple way of explaining it, the hands and our legs together to create some move. So the lag all of a sudden is not going to mean just go forward. The rain all of a sudden is not going to just mean stop or turn. It's going to work together to create some moves that usually include some lateral steps in the beginning. I'm going to actually get off now and I'm going to start on the ground. And we are going to teach this horse a um, little bit the beginning of this before we get in the saddle. It's easier for the horse to understand when he doesn't have to carry you. And it's also easier for you to understand when you don't have to be sitting on the horse and you can actually see what's happening better. Before we um, start to use the stick to cue the horse, I have the stick with me and I'm going to use that kind of instead of my lag. When I'm on the horse, it's going to be more the lag. Maybe the stick also, because while I'm off the horse, it's, it's important to be able to use the stick. Before I do so, I have to make sure he's not afraid of it. I have to make sure that I can kind of rub him with the stick all over, because if he overreacts to it or is afraid of it, that's not going to be likely to be successful. He's going to then overreact, get tense, and not react the way I want him to. I'm just going to show you one exercise that I can do on the ground. Uh, there's obviously many exercises we can do on the ground, but I'm going to show you one. It's simply called turn on the forehand. I want the horse to move the hind feet sideways and not the front feet. Um, what I like to do is I like to bring that rein up here on this side, and then I like to meet over here. I'm just going to follow the head stall. Too much mania. I want to let the, meet, the reins meet here. And what I can do is I can, by doing it like this, I can kind of have contact on both sides of his mouth. I can lift my hand up, and then I put a little contact on his inside. The left side, the side closer to me. I can put my hand down, and then I'm putting more pressure on the outside here. 
But if I twist my hand, I'm actually putting a little contact on both sides. So now he's, he's thinking, he's saying, hey, what do you want? You put pressure in my mouth. But I know I should be doing something. So I'm going to start with the stick here in front of his neck, on top of his neck. Make sure he's okay with it. I'm going to move my stick back. I'm still not doing anything with the reins. Move over the saddle, make sure he's okay with it. I move it down here, down his thigh. And then I'm going to lift up a little bit because I want him to look at me. I'm going to twist my hand a little bit so there's pressure on both sides of his mouth. A little bit, not, not much pressure, just a little contact. I'm going to tap him with the stick here on the left side. He takes one step sideways away from me, the hind end, then I release the reins, my hands go back to normal, and the stick goes down, away. Just one step is all I need. Again, I start here with the front, let him look a little bit towards me, I put the stick, uh, the, the, the reins up a little bit, lift up here, so I put a little more pressure on the inside, so he looks at me a little bit. I move this back here, I twist, tap, he moves his hind end over, and that's all I need. Okay? Let me show you again. Make sure he's okay with the stick. If he's afraid of it, we gotta work on that. But as you can see, he's not. He's quite okay with it. So again, I move the stick back from the front to the back. Lift up, twist, tap. He steps over, crosses that left hind leg over the right hind leg. That's all I need. Basically what I'm teaching him now is the beginning of using the reins together with the driving aid, which is the stick right now, to understand that there is something, there's another way to listen to it. I can work with those cues together and create a lateral move. Um, it's easier to do this on the ground first that it just makes it easier to start it in the saddle. Uh, there's many exercises you can do on the ground. This is just one of them. This is typically the first one. I think turn on the forehand is probably the most simple um, exercise you can start with that includes this connection, the connection between lag and rain. But the connection between lag and rain then becomes uh, the silver lining in training in gait riding, in my opinion. And it's very important that we take our time to, to, to teach this to the horse and make sure he understands it well and that there's no confusion there. Because in the beginning, we can very easily look to the horse like you are asking him to go and asking him to stop on the same time. But in reality, you're actually asking him to do a different kind of move. But the basic trained horse knows that lag means forward and the reins mean stop. And all of a sudden you use both on the same time. He, he, you need to make sure that you show him the way out and, and help him to understand what you want. And starting on the ground is, is the best way to do it. Uh, the next video, I'm going to move on. I'm going to get on the horse. I'm going to show you more how we, we do it in the saddle and different exercises. And... Um, show you how I want the horse to respond to, to all those different aids, and how I want to be able to control his feet so we can help, help improving. See you next time.